Hey everyone, Armitage here, and I'm really excited to show you this contest we're running for the LCS playoffs. It's called the Free LCS Playoffs Mega Giveaway, and there's a couple things you need to know. First of all, you can make up to 20 rosters. Second of all, it's going to be somewhat complicated because there are a lot of teams over the EU and NA LCS. But the best things of all is that first place gets $500 and it pays out all the way down to 2026. And the last thing is that it is absolutely free. So you can make all 20 teams for free. So I wanted to quickly go over some strategies on how to approach this tournament and hopefully instill some insight in how to get first place. All right. So with that said, let's, uh, let's start this. We're going to enter contest. And the first thing you're going to notice is that there are a lot of teams. You can see here's the EU. And you can start to see that there are to be determined teams. And this was a little confusing at first, and it might confuse you. And this is because we don't actually know who's going to play in those. So I have an easier way to show you for the NA, for example. We're going to bring up our tournament bracket. And you can see that the only games we know that are going to happen are Gravity versus TSM and Impulse versus Dignitas. And then whoever wins versus, for example, Impulse versus Dignitas is going to play CLG. And then the winner of that is going to play in the finals. So this is really important. Uh, you want to be able to predict who is going to win each of these matches. And you want to be able to cover in case you know this is an even match or if you think this is a one-sided match. For example, I, I think that Impulse is one-sided. I think they're going to beat Dignitas pretty easily. So those are things to keep in mind. And... Typically, you want to predict the winner, and but that actually doesn't that doesn't carry over for this. So I'm going to give you an example. Notice that if TIP goes to five games against Dignitas, and wins and goes on to their next match against CLG, and they lose in the best of five in the fifth game, that means they have an overall record of winning five games and losing five games. Whereas CLG could go 3-0 in the finals in the same example and win six games total and lose two games. That means that they would win three games against TIP, and then they would win three games against the finalists in a 3-0. This is just an example that you don't necessarily have to predict the winner. It really actually matters on how many matches that a team will play. With that said, you can also think of it in this situation, where if TIP makes it all the way to the finals, they'll have played more games than anyone else, which means they'll have more points. These are the things you want to keep in mind when building rosters. The teams in the quarterfinal matches have the highest possible points because they have the potential to play the most games. So also keep in mind that the loser of the semifinals play a third place match, meaning if TSM wins and then they lose here and then they win here, that means they've played three matches total. Whereas because they lost to Liquid, Liquid only play this match and the championship match, meaning they've only played two matches. This is really important when you're thinking about who's going to win, predicting which teams are going to have the highest points, etc. Because it's not necessarily, oh, Liquid's going to 3-0 and then Liquid's going to 3-2. That's only, you know, eight games total. Whereas if TSM goes to five games here, goes to five games here, and goes to five games here, that's 15 games compared to eight. So it's not necessarily about winning or losing. It's about how even the matchups are, who's going to score well, and things like that, which is stuff we've talked about in our previous videos. So what we're going to do next is write down 20 teams that we think have the highest potential of scoring well. And that doesn't, like I said in the previous part, doesn't necessarily mean the winner. It could mean who we think is going to go to game five most often, how many matches they can play, etc. And writing down these 20 teams involves exactly what we went over in the second episode of Mastering the Tournament, where you want to pick for example, four teams that you think have the highest potential of scoring and build off of those teams. Here, I'm going to show you an example. So we're going to open Notepad again, just like we've done before. And let's, let's just look at the NA uh, to keep things easy for now. So let's build, you know, remember, you can mix and match NA and EU. But just to keep things simple, we are going to build one NA team. So if I were to pick Team Impulse as a team that has a high possible points because they should win this match, for example. They could easily win this match. And then if they don't win this match, they also go to a third place match. So they have a very high potential to play three matches, which is very important. So the first team we could put is, let's say, TIP TSM. 
we could do TIP gravity. We could do TIP team liquid. Now, you don't necessarily have to pick four TIP members. They are quite expensive, but you get the idea that you basically want to go through and create 20 teams using the EU and the NA mixed together to figure out who has the highest potential chance of getting the most points. Also remember to keep in mind which teams typically like to fight more often and which teams tend to play more objective based. Knowing these can really help increase your chances of higher scores. Here's just three teams that I came up with quickly. Obviously these are just based off of TIP, but you really want to come down and figure out which teams you want to create rosters from. So if I was going to pick my, you know, let's say four or five teams that I would base my rosters off of, I would pick TIP because they can play a max of three matches. TSM, because they can also play a max of three matches because they'll, if they win this one, then they will definitely play in this one. And then they'll either play in the championship or the third place match. And then I would also pick gravity. And the reason I'm picking these specifically is because all of these have the chance to play three games. Unlike a lot of the teams like Liquid and CLG really only have the chance to play two matches. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't pick any Liquid or CLG teams. This is up to your discretion. So we can also take a look at the EU, and it's pretty much the same thing. So if we were going to base off the strategy using the NA, we want to do, we'd probably pick, let's say, H2K, Giants, and Unicorns of Love. And these are the six teams we want to create teams out of. So then you would go down and you'd do TIP TSM, TIP Gravity, TIP H2K, TIP Giants, oh, Giants, TIP Unicorns of Love, and then you'd move on to the next one. And you would do TSM Gravity, TSM H2K, TSM, TSM Gravity. All right, so here are the teams that I came up with, these teams. Now, obviously, we don't want to make rosters of the teams that are playing against each other because one of these will obviously lose in the first round. So we want to get rid of H2K and Giants, and we want to get rid of TSM and Gravity. They play each other, and I believe that's it. So this is just an example on how to build 12 teams, and you have a chance to possibly add in another team in here in your projected winners, say... Fnatic or um, Origin or anything like that. And then you want to come up with 20 teams using this strategy, which we went over in Mastering the Tournament Part 2. And the last thing you want to do is optimize your rosters. And I'm not really going to get into detail about specific people you want to take. You can refer back to the first video of Mastering the Tournament and really get an idea of how to make the best roster using these teams. For example, if you were building TIP TSM, you want to pick the best players from each team or the best players you can choose for their salary. And a lot of this has gone over in the first of the series. So just go check that out and it'll really help you build optimized rosters. All right, so I've made one example. So this is an H2K TIP team. And you can obviously tell I only have one TIP, but that's the most I can afford. And then I filled it with Gravity, who has a high potential to score very well if they go to three matches. So this is obviously a decently risky team considering Gravity is going against TSM. But if you're shooting for first place, you kind of have to take some risks. And I just wanted to show you guys an example of building an optimized roster based off of the notepad file we just made. And this would be our TIP H2K team right here. And that's really it, guys. And I really hope that this helps you think about things. I can't really go over, you know, exact things you have to do to win this tournament. There's a lot involved and I think the biggest factor is how many matches you think a team will play. Remember that the teams that are in the semifinals already, for example, Liquid and CLG, can only play two matches. So that's really important and to remember that they're more expensive than a team like Gravity. But Gravity has the potential that if they win their first match, they will likely play three they will definitely play three matches, excuse me. So Keep that in mind and just remember these strategies when you're building teams. And I really, I want to wish you guys the best of luck. I'm going to be entering my teams and I'm really excited for this contest. I mean, you, nothing can really go wrong. This is great practice for you guys to enter more tournaments later on. And I hope you guys win first place. So good luck.